Hello and welcome to Kit Plus TV. Now there's no point in making great television if no one can see it. Delivery and content distribution is the key to monetizing your media and reaching your dedicated viewer and your solution needs to be reliable and robust. So with, with decades of experience in this area, both wired and wireless, is Roden Schwartz. And with the advent of 5G broadcast and the move to IP, a safe pair of hands is essential. So we'd like to welcome Aziz Targa. Hi Aziz, welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Say Simon. It's good to see you, Aziz. So, look, there's a lot of noise about 5G in the broadcast industry. Can you tell us what's so special about 5G broadcast? Well, um, actually, the point is that 5G broadcast is uh, not a traditional standard in broadcast in broadcasting industry. So it is merging and mixing and converging broadcast and broadband together. This is maybe the first uh, distinguishing point from 5G broadcast in comparison to existing um, traditional broadcast standards. And it allows actually the broadcasters to go out of the traditional business case of uh, and business model of 24 over 7 distribution to make their infrastructure much more spectra, um, uh, dynamic. Their spectrum is much more um, intelligently scheduled and allows a lot of services that includes both portable, mobile, and fixed um, based services. And so there's, there's some good benefits there to the broadcasters for 5G, 5G broadcast, but what, what's the benefit to the consumers of, of this new way of doing things, this new technology? Well, the main nice thing that the, the consumer will not really see the difference in terms of um, infrastructure or um, change of services because the consumer will still receive the content linear on demand, live content, for instance, at home and on the go. But yeah. the main changer, uh, the main game changer is the quality of experience. So um, the 5G broadcast is brought into the, the industry not only to diversify the business um, model and business incentives to the stakeholders, but also to en enrich um, the uh, quality of service and to enhance the experience of the end users while they are in the network. So Aziz, there's obviously a lot involved in making this happen. Are all parts of the chain now in place? Yeah, it's, it's, a, um, it's a puzzle that needs to be filled with many pieces, you know, that includes um, the um, the infrastructure provider, that means the end-to-end -end infrastructure should be already there in place, um, which is glass to glass. And this includes at least two stakeholders, two main stakeholders, the infrastructure provider or the vendor, plus the uh, chipset manufacturers and OEM on the receiving side. Uh, but also on top of this, um, a player who needs to deploy such a system needs to get a blessing from the regulatory uh, in that country, so many pieces together. Uh, maybe the most uh, obvious thing is that the uh, change or the translation of a written standard from a written piece of paper into reality from infrastructure perspective. And this is what we are having and what Roder Schwarz is bringing into the industry um, with the latest 3GPP releases. We have right now the end-to-end -end infrastructure ready for commercial deployment. And the missing piece still from reception perspective is um, becoming a bit more and more uh, uh, dynamically involved into the, the, the chain so that we, if we refer, for example, to the recent um, demo that, that we did with Qualcomm in Mobile World Congress 2022, um, that, that broke the usual when we were only using a, an FPGA or a software defined receiver. And now we can use the right smartphone as even a prototype smartphone form factor, but at least changing the habits and that going step by step potentially into implementing this on end user devices. And I'm, um, you know, the, the, with this new uh, sort of wider ecosystem, this new way of working, you must, uh, as, as Rosen Schwartz, you've got experience in many areas, but you must be uh, uh, sort of involving some other partners. There must be some strategic partnerships involved here. For this for this project, and um, I mean, and how does this work worldwide? Because does does the same with with five G broadcast? Is it the same partner in each area of the world? You you just mentioned there are different uh, government policies you've got to match up to. How does it work worldwide? 
Yeah, it's it's a complex ecosystem. It's a a segmented and even fragmented ecosystem when it comes to broadcast plus media. It's not easy to bring pieces together. But what we are trying to do is that we try to make a um, globalized, um, unified, universal, universal system that can be deployed and try to avoid having a um, a separate standard for each area each region because if we compare the broadcasting industry versus mobile industry mobile industry since decades right now they they were not deploying any system specific for a certain area but we were talking about for example starting from lte we talk about a universal standard that can be deployed everywhere around the globe for broadcasting industry i'm afraid we're not yet there but i think we are going step by step to that to have a global and universal standard that can be deployed in any country. Um, this needs some some work on the standard side, which is on the go. Um, but this needs also some changes in the habits of different regions, um, for example, like Southeast Asia or like Latin America or even the US. And right now we're trying to, to find out a way to bring 5G broadcast into the image of a global standard that can be, um, that unifies, I mean, many, many regions. Um, from regulatory perspective, more or less, uh, the requirements are the same somehow in many, many regions, but there are small details that needs to be taken into account from country to country, even not even to the region. So for example, in Europe, there are different requirements, small details that needs to be taken into account in um, mm. some countries in Europe in comparison to others. So the next big thing in uh, America seems to be ATSC3. Can you tell us how Roden Schwartz are rolling this out? Well, yeah, correctly. So ATSC3 is the next um, standard which is ready for prime time in the US. And um, US already started to um, roll out this technology since 2020. Uh, Rodan Schwarz is, has been always positioning itself as a technology leader. So independent of the what's what's which standard we talk about. So uh, when it comes to the US, it's up to the market to decide at, at the end of the day. It's not only on, for the US, by the way, but any market around the globe, it's up to that market to decide about the technology. We support the various types of the, the broadcasting technology, and then we just try to follow and try to give the advice and let's see what the market uh, decides at the end of the day. For the US, the ATSC 3.0 is, uh, is, uh, is ready for prime time. It's already started to be rolled out since, I think, 2020. It is uh, gaining momentum more and more. And we, as Roland Schwarz, we are, of course, supporting um, ATSC3 in the US. Um, it's, it has its position, it has its characteristics in the US. Um, also from regulatory framework, it's uh, it's best fit for the moment in the US. So um, since the repack that started in 2017, Roland Schwarz is committed to support its partners and customers in the US for rolling out ATSC3 for services that the market decides at the end of the day. Now, we're, we're, we're leading up, we're not far from NAB, hence where we are at the moment. Um, but at the show, where what what can we witness? Uh, what can people, you know, who want to come and visit Roden Schwartz at, at, at NAB, um, what can we witness in person live at the show? How, what do we experience of, of this solution? Can, and how close is it, I guess, to, to what I might experience in the real world? Well, uh, as usual, Rodan Schwarz is present there with uh, two different um, two different business units, so to speak. One is media oriented for contribution, ingest, and so on, and the other part, which is the transmission, the, which is the uh, distribution part, so to speak. Uh, there is ATSC three as a main headline, of course, uh, to address the needs and to close the gaps from a market's point of view. We will have products there um, that are compliant for ATSC three with the latest features. Uh, to be to be shown there, but the new thing is that we would like to show to the US market that in addition to ATSC3, there is also 5G broadcast, which is in place. Um, that that's why we will do a a live dis demonstration, an end-to-end -end live demonstration, including the core network, the transmitter part, as well as the um, the uh, reception with the content encoded with the antenna. Everything is in place um, to make the mm. demo as much as successful as possible. It is indeed, NAB is indeed actually um, targeting US, but also we need to keep in mind that uh, NAB is targeting Americas in general. So 
North and Latin America. And that's why we are um, keeping in mind that ATSC3 is number one for sure for the US, but AF, uh, we would like to show what other countries, what other regions are doing um, in relation to latest standard, mm. which is 5G broadcast. And that's why we are uh, planning to do the live demo there in Vegas. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Aziz. Uh, of course, we're really looking forward to seeing you and the team in Vegas in, uh, well, less than two weeks now. Thank you very much to Media Proxy for their support, Kit Plus TV, and thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and, of course, download the podcast. You can find that at kitplus.com for us podcast or just search your directory for Kit Plus. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.